Welcome back, everybody, to the Birdies and Bourbon Show. Uh, yeah, uh, well, if you're just listening uh, and you can't see him, we have the one Rob Collins on from King Collins Golf Course Design. Did I get that right? Close enough? You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, per perfect. <laughs> hey, that may, be, that may be the only thing I get right. So, uh, so at least we're starting off on a good foot, man. Um, so, Rob, thanks so much for coming on with Dan and I today. We really appreciate the, uh, appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk about Sweeten's Cove. I mean, I got the bottle sitting in front of me. I may have a sip or two. Hopefully, I don't have three or four and get, get in the wrong direction. <laughs> if I do, that just means you're going to get to talk more, which uh, is probably, that's right. what, that's probably what people want to hear anyway, man. That's so, true. I so do. yeah. So, um, you know, we do kind of like to kind of get going and, and, you know, I mean, you're, uh, I said it before we kicked off. I mean, you're a podcast pro at this point, man. I mean, you've, uh, you, you've got to have these things mastered. Um, <laughs> but, but maybe for folks that, um, uh, if they haven't been exposed and they don't know who Rob Collins is and kind of what's going on, uh, you want to give us uh, what, why golf architecture and how'd you wind up uh, on a show with us? Yeah, I um, Well, I'm, I'm one half of King Collins Golf Course Design. My partner, Tad King, and I started a golf course design build firm way back in 2010, which is, is hard to believe. Um, but we uh, went out and, and built this nine hole golf course that... Um, kind of took off and uh now it's got a whiskey named after it and, <laughs> um so i think that's a pretty good fit for us for birdies and bourbon so um I, i'm you know, glad we, you we're, brought we're that up some, I, we're doing I, some other stuff too thanks to the thanks to the success of sweet and scove yeah yeah pretty awesome and and uh Let's see if uh, the next time I talk to a Damsky, if I didn't at least mention his name, I'm definitely uh, <laughs> going to catch a lot of shit over that one. So I'll, I'll get him out of the way first. And, and, and I do want to dig into kind of the, the Sweetens Cove and the, the spirit of what's happening. And I've played, I don't know, a few times I've had a chance to play and uh, played with a couple of members there. So, you know, uh, Matt's always good about setting me up with, because uh, sometimes I'm kind of passing through and I'm stopping in. He's like, oh, I got some guys over here to hook you up with. But um, I, I have had a chance to go through kind of the full-blown story and, and um, kind of I'm, I'm going to talk for just a couple of minutes, but it's, I'm going to get us in a direction of, of, of just the Sweetens, the Sweetens Cove spirit, if you will, and, and kind of why... I think the, you know, the, I don't even know if a cult following is fair at this point. Uh, I think you, you definitely passed the cult following uh, in, in popularity, but it, you know, it, it is just the whole premise of, you know, thinking about golf and, and your, your traditional, you know, oh, this was my grandfather's way of playing. And then there's nothing wrong with that whole traditional aspect of, you know, keep it quiet and, uh, you know, don't make a lot of noise. And you're kind of, you know, you're walking around the golf course kind of thing. <laughs> But, you know, the, the whole, just the buzz that you feel uh, walking on to, walking on to Sweetens and, and uh, Dampsey, he's given his run in the morning and kind of getting everybody fired up. I mean, it's, you know, and, and let's be honest. I mean, there are times you show up at the golf course and, you know, you might be a little cloudy from whatever you may have been doing the night before and you got to get some energy and get a little oh, buzz boy. going. But, but that's exactly what that dude does and and I think that and we'll talk some a lot about the golf course, but just that that I, I think that while the golf course, I mean you you built a hell of a gym there, man, in in what was there pre-existing and what you turned it into. And then, you know, probably in my opinion, one of the uh one of the better assets to the course is that gentleman. And I know Patrick was there prior to and and you know had a great kind of uh buzz around, you know, his commitment and 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 what he wanted to do to the golf course. So not taking anything away from any uh predecessors, but uh but that that operation that's running there now, it's one of those things. I mean, it makes you really it like it's it, it's one of those, it's like, oh, I can't wait to go back and play golf, but it's, I can't wait and go back and play golf at that course. And, and that's kind of the energy and the hype and what's going on, or at least the feeling that I get and all the folks that I've had an opportunity to interact with at Sweden. So, you know, I, I condone you for um, kind of being a trailblazer, man, and, and taking something, you know, it's, uh, we're, let's take this nine hole golf course. And again, I, I think I was reading in an article probably, and you said, well, it's really not a nine hole golf course. I mean, you, you know, the, the record, the dude played at the, 
I uh, forget the name of the, the event, but it, the, the play all day uh, yeah. event that you guys have, I think he hit 254 holes in one day yeah. or something yeah. ridiculous, Incredible. right? I, yeah. yeah. I don't even know that I want to try to attempt anything like that, but you know, I mean, there's probably 254 different ways to play those <laughs> holes. I mean, and you, you've got a 254 hole golf course at this point, right? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, uh, you know, as far as Matt goes, we, he was a great hire. And um, as Sweetens has gained in popularity, Matt's role or the GM role at Sweetens Cove is, is a lot of it's what we kind of call like a, he's like a golf concierge in a way and, um, you know, helps people, you know, feel at home, feel welcome um, and, you know, kind of shows them the, the Sweetens way while they're there if they haven't been there. And, you know, like you said, you know, he sets you up with some of our regulars on a couple of occasions and that's the type of thing he does all the time. And, um, you know, that's something we've always stressed from day one, even when we weren't crowded, but was, you know, treating people like family and kind of building this, you know, extended family that, that has over time grown exponentially and, you know, kind of one person at a time. And, and Matt's role is incredibly important and he's, uh, a huge part of it and we're so lucky to have him i i love the guy and and, and very thankful that, that he's part of it so that that makes really makes a big impact on people's experience no doubt yeah yeah absolutely so so you you uh you got uh you got an opportunity to work on sweetens yourself and um, and Ta um, King and Collins was together when when the sweetens cove uh, uh idea was presented right that's right. We, uh, Tad and I built the, the old golf course that was there was called Squatchy Valley Golf and Country Club. And we were hired to, to remake that. And we, uh, we did that and that, that was what we were hired to do. But our client ended up uh, walking away from the project. Um, and they, they never got it open and, uh, they were close to getting it open, but never did. And, and long story short, I, they ended up approaching me to see if I'd like to take it over on a long-term lease. And I partnered with a guy named Ari Techner, who was a, uh, one of the founders of Scratch Golf, a uh, custom yep. club manufacturer. And then we brought a few more partners on and we, uh, you know, scraped it together for about four or five years. And then um, over the last couple of years, things have, have really exploded. Well, you, you've done a damn good job of scraping. If I, if I ever need somebody to scrape, like I'm, I'm calling and picking your brain, man, because you, you're a better scraper than, uh, than most of what I see. That well, goes we, on, so. I don't know about that. We, um, it was awfully close to not being around there for a, a bunch of years. And, um, it, that's kind of hard to believe, um, considering all that, all that's happened in the last two years, but, uh, looking back on it, we're just, we're glad it made it and glad it's, you know where it is now. It's yeah, fun, to, it, fun to be a part. Fun to watch it. Did I mean? It, did it you, never never ceases to amaze me what what that little course has done. Well, I mean that's exactly what I was going to say. Is I mean there and and now I mean looking back on it and, and again every everything you know there's there's a plan every day right to make to continuing to make things successful and better etc. But but you know and and again I've I've read read quite a few articles about you and your story and and definitely. Um, uh, challenging times that you went through. So, you know, cheers to you for, for persevering and see your vision. A absolutely. But, you know, was there a point in time when you're kind of like, yeah, this is, this is working. And, 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 and I, and really, I mean, from like, from the construction side, and I hope we can get into a little bit of your kind of the, uh, you know, you, I think you've got strengths as influences you in some kind of ways mm -hmm. and, and in those lines, but well, did you ever be like, yeah, this is going to actually work? Yeah, I mean, Tad and I, you know, when, when we were doing it, we we felt like we were had this secret that nobody knew about. Like, we could tell that this place was going to be really special. And it was just a dogfight at that point to keep it alive. I mean, it the, the construction process had its ups and downs as well. And, um, you know, there were actually moments in time when we weren't sure, you know, if the client was going to pull the plug on the construction before it ever got finished. So... Um, but we knew that if this thing gets open, it's going to blow people's doors off. We just got to get the thing open yeah. and because we were really excited about what, what was going on out there and we knew it was good and knew it was different, um, which I think was really important. Um, it needed to be different 
in order to get people to come to South Pittsburgh, Tennessee to play a nine hole golf course. So we just put one foot in front of the other to get it to that point where people could, you know, actually come out and see it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it is just that, man. I mean, it is, uh, it, it's a sight to see. I, I don't know. You, you probably listened to the show with Matt, but we were talking just, you know, I mean, you go and you think, okay, we got nine holes and then you get to the first green, which I don't think is anywhere near the largest green complex. And you're like going, well, wait a minute, <laughs> where, where's the other holes? But I mean, where, where's the other fairways? Because the greens are, you know, yeah. probably twice as big or bigger for the most part than any greens that you're playing on a traditional 18 hole golf course. Yep. That's right. Yeah. They're, 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 they're quite large and, you know, that, that really is a big part of it and how much flexibility that golf course has and how much it changes from, from one day to the next. And, um, you know, now that we have two pins out on every green, it really makes you think forward to, well, I can't wait to get around and see what that like to play on that other pin and kind of create, sure. create a sense of anticipation and, you know, wondering, you know, what, what the golf course is going to reveal to you each time around. Yeah. I, so just uh, in a, maybe on a uh, backtrack on a little, and I don't have to mention any names, but you, you were in a, you were working for a, uh, a golf course uh, architect firm prior to creating your own. So mm-hmm. I don't, we, we can go in any, you don't, we don't have to mention yeah, it no, or not. I was working for uh, Gary player immediately before that, um, which was a, which was a great experience. And then i um, moved home in uh, late 2008 at the time of the, uh, economic downturn and and then the perfect uh, time to go out on your own by the way yeah, exactly <laughs> well time. that really forced us out on our own and then about two years later tad and i just decided to jump on it i had heard uh, some rumblings that these uh, people were thinking about rebuilding this nine hole golf course out in marion county in tennessee and so we formed a company and and went after that project which eventually became sweet and scove yeah, so so looking back and kind of where I was going is, I mean, again, if you haven't been to Sweetens Cove, it's a uh, it, it it's bucket list for sure. I think what you guys hit like forty nine or fifty this year. Forty nine on the top one hundred modern. Yeah, and awesome, and it's man. not the Congrats. first time you've been in the top one hundred or top fifty of any list. Yeah, so. We've been we've been ranked since uh, two thousand sixteen on that list. So yeah, um, yeah. So if you if you don't like uh, really interesting fun. <laughs> Uh, creative golf courses that allow you to have a really good time. Don't go to Sweetens Cove, <laughs> right? I mean, that's kind of, if you want to have a miserable time and play shitty golf, then uh, you know this is this is not your place. Not, so. not the place for you. That's right. Right. So, but I mean, so in just in, I mean, again, I'm just kind of chatting about like your previous experience and understanding, you know, that that. But you're building more kind of traditional golf courses, if you will, right? And 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 or maybe you're you're overhauling traditional golf courses. I mean, were you always kind of sitting there going like, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. And, and from a golf course architectural, like, th- yeah, this is the environment that I want to work in, but I want to do something different. And you've got like just some creative stuff that you, you just can't express when it's, when it's somebody else's show. Yeah. I mean, I always had an inkling that I wanted to do something different. And one thing that really concerned me <clears throat> early on in my career was that I was going to get trapped in a place in in golf or golf architecture where I was doing you know basically amenities for other other things like an amenity for a housing development or this or that with a golf kind of a a second nature thing and yeah you love golf and it's fun that you're getting to do this but you're not building something that's a a standalone piece now I was in much of golf you know back in the 80s 90s and 2000s what was that and um so that was a concern for me for sure and you know there, there's a lot of creative restraints um placed on architects when they have to work in that you know those sorts of situations so um i, I always kind of hope that that wasn't going to be my fate um and you know fortunately you know again with the everything for us comes out of sweetens cove i mean that's that's the thing that that gave us life as far as golf course architects go and kind of cast us in a a certain light that's allowed us to have other opportunities and, um, you know, pursue similar projects in the sense that, you know, all all the clients who contact us are people who are are serious about building something unique and, and permanent and, 
and worthwhile. We don't we don't get phone calls about just bullshit yeah. stuff, which yeah. is nice. No, I mean, I, I think that's really cool, right? And I mean, if you're, and, and again, if the, and I'm sure if you're making that phone, I mean, I don't think people are cold calling uh, King Collins, be like, hey, uh, we'd like to see if we could submit a bid for you to do, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, that, that's probably not what you're getting and just, you know, fundamentally. Uh, but what about the, uh, what about the, did, did you ever work with Mike at all or did you just no, enjoyed I, his? I never even knew Mike Strantz. Uh, the first time I played, one of his golf courses was when I, I was an intern for Rick Robbins, uh, architect in, in the Raleigh area. And he took the office to go play uh, Tobacco Road in, it was our Christmas present, which would have been 2004. Okay. So freezing cold and it was raining. And I'd, I'd heard there was this really unique, interesting golf course. And um, it just kind of blew me away. I, I, I just, it opened my mind to so much of, you know, that you can really pr push the boundaries and, um, you know, truly take the stance that there really aren't that, you know, there, there really aren't rules in, in golf course architecture that need to be followed. And that, that helped me open up my mind a lot. And, and that was a huge influence for sure. I wish, I wish I'd had the opportunity to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can see again, not, I wouldn't compare Sweetens to any of the other courses, you know, Strantz courses I played, but, you know, just in hearing you kind of mention that and how it's like, Oh, well shit, you don't, you don't have to do this. And you, the, you know, the fairway doesn't have to go this way and you can have blind shots and you can have, mm -hmm. uh, then yep. the greens can be tiered in ways that aren't really yeah. fundamentally sound. And so, yeah, it was interesting because I, I like that as well. I mean, it's a good, my golf game doesn't like it. The scorecard <laughs> hates it, but, um, but, but I, I do think that's interesting in, you know, and then, cause I don't, we don't see a whole lot of that out of, um, you know, out of the architect golf architect industry. Um, you know, maybe we're going to see more. I know you got some, uh, you, you got some things you're working on. So you're, uh, what in Nebraska, when, when's the opening yeah. date for, uh, for Landman? Uh, Landman, we're going to, I'll say one more thing about Mike Strands. Oh, yeah. I, I think that, um, I think that there's sort of a sporting aspect to, to what he did and he kind of tapped into a sort of the old world feel of golf that you'd have at a place like Presswick or North Berwick and, yeah, you know, accepting that not everything is going to be fair. Not everything's going to break your way. You're going to quirky, interesting things are important in golf and, and, and not being formulaic, you know, is a, a hallmark of some of the best golf courses in the world. And he kind of, in an American, a truly American golf course, tapped into something that that's predates all of the golf courses in America. And, and I think that was, was really cool, you know, how he did that. And, um, so we, you know, that's one of the things I take away from him. And then, you know, you brought up Landman. That's a, a course where we're, um, you know, building a new 18 in, in Nebraska. And um, we are going to finish the golf course this year. And hopefully um, it will definitely have some holes open by the end of this year. Um, undetermined as yet of how many there will be. It depends a lot on the weather and so forth. Um, and then we'll have, uh, you know, the full 18 open, um, in 2022. Yeah. So. Through the grow in and, and yeah. such. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not, if that's, a, I mean, I guess that's the other thing it's, you know, you, you, uh, we, we don't know each other personally, but, um, you know, in, in chatting with, and, and not to stray, stay on the strands wagon, but having an opportunity to chat with some of the superintendents at some of, um, uh, who, so we chatted with Morgan at uh, tobacco road and, uh, Jim hunt tune, which is at heritage. So, you know, I mean, some people that, that, you know, those, those kind of tendencies, but, uh, just as an architect, I mean, it's gotta be, and it's probably the reason that you're able to do what you do is that it requires a hell of a lot of patience. I mean, <laughs> you're, I mean, cause you're, you're, you're moving lots of things and, and then once it's done, right. And I don't mean done, I don't mean complete. I just mean, once you've got, 
once you've got it to a position to where, okay, now we're going to get grass. I mean, you know, then you've got another just incubating period, which I kind of, it's kind of like making whiskey, right? I mean, it's like, Hey, that <laughs> like it, I think it's going to be a good idea. Still looks like a good idea. Okay. It still doesn't look like it sucks yet. I think it's going to yeah. be fine. And then, you know, you're years after the fact. And it is, if you're looking I mean, which is kind of weird because you like to play golf and it's like, you know, the thing about golf is it, when you're playing golf, I mean, you've got an immediate impact. You've got an immediate return on, on your output, right? Mm -hmm. You hit the ball and it's like, I'm, I'm either really happy or I'm really pissed off, but I'm going to go do it again. And you just continue to repeat. So I'm just, uh, and, and I just thought about this as we're talking, but I'm kind of thinking, how does that translate over from, because you got to be a patient fella, right? To, to do what you're doing. I think that's a, a good analogy, a really good analogy, because um, you know, we've, we've thought a lot about that at, at Landman and we, we think that Landman is a, a transformational golf course for, for King Collins and, and what we're doing. And, um, Landman for us really and truly was the perfect golf course at the perfect time. Um, it's just, a an extraordinary piece of land. It's a brand new 18, uh, great client. We, we needed that break at that time um and that'll help we know what's going to come after Landman. i mean it, it's going to change the conversation for for us i mean we we definitely can't complain about publicity and, and that kind of stuff but it's gonna take things to another level for us we it, i feel like kind of the way i did you know when we were building sweden's cove it's like wow once this place gets open it's it's gonna really opened some eyes and you can it's landman's the same way i mean you just wow. walk around there and it's just like oh boy that's you, awesome you man that you can walk away from a successful you can, just feel the, you can feel the earth shaking underneath you you know what's coming wow. yeah i mean that you can walk away from a successful story that is that is sweetens that that potentially wasn't going to be successful and now you get that same feeling at a day i mean that's got to feel good it uh, does at, but, but, but to your point though too i mean there is a, a a waiting aspect to it. I mean, April, when we get to go back out there and start finishing, can't come fast enough. I was just talking to Will Anderson, our client the other day, and it's just like, we're both just counting down the days and um, really anxious that I wish I could, we could just snap our fingers and be at opening day, but well, ho hopefully mother nature is kind to, yep. uh, to you guys. And it allows you to, to, uh, to proceed uh, expeditiously. So yeah. So, yeah. We're, we're, Bob, you go ahead. We so you said um, when you were doing Sweden's, I think uh, when the client approached you that you wanted to build like one of the best nine hole golf courses in the world. Now you were serious about that. And here you go in with the landman and you're saying, we're going to do it again with 18. But my curiosity is, you know, we got a little bit into the strands discussion and our understanding Cal, right? was he, he drew everything out. How, what is your process? Like, are you, do you draw all the holes out before you start doing the construction or are you at one that there was spray paint? What, what's, what's your process look like? We do a, um, I do a like a map of the course, basically a, a routing um, that gives us a you know a, a general idea of of you know what the holes are going to be like, and some of them are quite specific, but for the most part, that's really just a guide. Mm -hmm. And then we we go out and then we work with our shapers. Um, we are a design build firm, so we do everything in house, and it's a tight knit group of guys, and it's you know very much kind of a go with the flow um, type of mentality. And there's a saying in golf that, you know, a lot of the best things that happen happen by accident. So, um, you know, you, you want, I think the key with the, with our process is that you have to have the team understand the framework of what you're trying to accomplish. And as long as they understand that framework, we encourage them to put their own, inspiration and own creativity and talent into the process because you're going to get a much better golf course if the everyone who's involved is engaged and is excited about what they're doing they feel like they're a part of it um then they start shaping they start building and it all kind of comes together and you make tweaks on the ground based on on what's happening and you know 99 times out of 100 if they're working within the framework of 
that you've kind of put out there, um, you know, usually you're going to like what happens and then, um, you know, you'll make, make some tweaks here and there and, 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 and just refine it. And you just keep working on the details, working on the details until it's done. And I kind of have a thing that, um, you know, I kind of believe that there's no one detail that that's more important than another. So, you know, even, you know, one tiny little thing that, may not be noticeable on its own. My feeling about it is, is if you treat every detail the same, no matter how visible it is or how much it, how much you see it, that on, on its own, each detail is not necessarily going to matter. But when all those details are added up as a whole, that's when you can really tell the difference. Mm -hmm. And if you go about the process of, you know, laboriously, considering all these little things then the end result theoretically will be of a higher pedigree because you have put more into it and so um you know that's kind of the process and it just kind of keeps getting refined and all the way through until the till until it gets grass and and you know mine and tad's goal is to each time somebody touches it whether it's us or one of our shapers um, that it improves every day. You know, it's, we never, never go backwards on a hole and, and just try to keep making it better and better and better until it's done. Mm -hmm. Did I, did I hear we've got our first PGA event at a, uh, King <laughs> Collins, uh, course coming up in uh, the next yeah. like five years. Yeah, they were, that's pretty funny. They were, um, they were joking about that with the, the Trump news so mm. about having bringing it to Sweeten's Cove. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, well, and Sweeten's as being a nine hole, but it is, uh, it, you know, and, and that's again, not to belabor the trance thing, but um, you know, so most trance courses, you know, even though, and they're, they're kind of unique and people could use the worm, the term tricked out. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I would just say it's probably a little more natural in its setting and environment. But is um, is Landman going to be? Uh, is it a seven thousand plus uh, plus uh, uh, plus course? It's that right about, right about seven thousand, um, yeah. maybe just a, a touch more. It might even be a touch less. I mean, I you know when we measured it out, give or take, yeah, seven thousand ninety-seven yards. Yeah. If you measure it exactly today, I'd say it's around that. It's it's right around seven thousand. I don't know the, the exact number, um, but it is kind of just what we felt it needed to be in, in a unique way. It's a par 73. Um, there's, nice. there's one extra par five. Um, so hmm. it's, um, it's just a really, really unique golf course. Yeah. It's, think, it's fun to hear. And as playing sweetens, I mean, I'm like, I'm excited like, to, get out there and uh yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to, to uh to making that trip yeah well i can't wait for you to be able to see it uh so what about building a nine hole course versus an 18 hole course uh because i i know and i don't know how much you want to get into any future endeavors but i think tad may have taken on something personally down in mississippi i'm sure it's still the, a team thing but I, I think he might be uh kind of shepherding that one and then i believe there's one in mississippi and then you got a new york uh a New York course coming up or in the works potentially. And, and it looked like all those were kind of nine hole city courses, you know, working with a limited, a limited amount of space. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you getting so, so kind of to your, you, you said it earlier is uh, people are probably going to start having, or I'm sure they already are having different conversations with what kind of courses are going to ask you to build, but it looks like you're kind of still gravitating to some, uh, you know, some of these uh, li limited space uh, uh, or limited acreage areas where you can be creative and, and turn something into a, you know, a really unique setting that you wouldn't otherwise see. Yeah. So we've got a, another nine hole course um, that we built uh, that'll be opening around Memorial Day. Um, mm. up at, it's a new place called NS Mountain Resort, I-N-N-E-S-S. -S. Um, they're kind of just now starting to roll out some of their um, PR about the, the project. It's kind of been kind of quiet, actually. We haven't talked about it much, and they've been, um, you know, kind of getting their whole PR package together because the golf course is part of a, a larger resort. It's not just uh, – the golf course is a standalone course, um, in that, you know, there's not a bunch of housing and stuff around it, right. but 
at, at this resort, they will also have hiking and biking and fishing and a, and a hotel and, and so forth. And, you know, they're kind of getting all these other elements online besides the golf and um, that we're really, you know, super excited about that as well. Um, then we've got, um, we're doing the, I think you alluded to Brazen Head, uh, yep. the 12 project in, in Mississippi and Jackson, Mississippi, which we're repurposing a, a existing 18 hole course called Colonial Country Club. That's an abandoned course. I'm um, turning that into 12. Um, and we're super excited about that. That's going to be really fun. I, I think we might have a chance to start that one later this year. Um, and then, uh, We've talked to some other clients, um, you know, some of them are nine holes. And then we've got a, a 18 hole course called Red Feather that we're going to start out in, uh, in Lubbock, Texas uh, this year. Um, oh, nice. A brand new 18, um, which is great. So, you know, we're getting a, we're getting a mixture of, of projects, um, which is great. I, you know, with the huge success of Sweetens Cove, um, you know, I never really saw Sweetens Cove, as you mentioned earlier, as just a nine hole golf course. Um, I always believed it to be more than that. And I think that that mentality is a big part of the reason why it, it kind of went where it went to. I mean, if you didn't believe that in the beginning, well, then you know, right. <laughs> you're, you're, you're going to reap what you sow. Right. Sure. So, um, <clears throat> but to that point, I, golf and golf architecture has a way of pigeonholing people man, fairly or unfairly. And I became concerned. I did not want uh, King Collins to be pigeonholed as these guys who do these nine hole courses or, yeah. you know, look, all that stuff is really important and has a great place in the future of the game. But, um, I know that we're capable of, you know, doing a, a very wide variety of work, whether it's, you know, a new 36 18th, holes and, or, uh, you know, we, we did a, um, we did a practice area in, in sea palms, uh, down in St. Simons, Georgia, it's a four and a half acre practice area that we're extremely proud of. So, I mean, in, anything sure. from, from that all the way up to a, you know, grand 18 like landman on a, this tumbling wild side. I mean, I just didn't want King Collins to be seen as this kind of a one trick pony. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, you know, we had the, there was a chance that it, those could be the only calls we could get. I mean, you know, a lot of times yeah. people get cast as, Oh, well, this guy's, you know, that he does restorations or whatever. Well, that, restoration guy may be perfectly capable of doing an amazing new 18 out of the ground, but all the calls he's getting is be just because of that's the way he's been typecast. It's like an actor. I mean, you know, it's like, Oh, well he was on Melrose's place. Well, uh, that's only, I can't think of him any, any other way. Right. You know, right. right. Um, no, so, no, he, th this guy's good for sitcoms. I can't put him in a two hour movie. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. And I did, yeah. I was very worried that not very worried, but it was, a thought you, well, you know, got to be you got to be conscious right because i mean you, you, i was cognizant of that i did i didn't want us to get pigeonholed and um and um that's why i said that landman was the right course at the right time yeah yeah that, that's exciting man i mean it's good to hear that you yeah i mean directionally right i mean it's good to hear that it's like hey not only is it something that, that, that it's going to turn out good and i feel the same way about it but it's going to be a, a different, it's going to be an expression of still King Collins, but an expression that was like, okay, well, this is going to be interesting in the way you put it together and the way you're going to have to build it and the creativeness that you're going to be able to, to, to structure around that. I mean, I, I think that's, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that, that sounds awesome, man. I mean, it's got to be, got to be a good spot sitting at the uh, King Collins table right now. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're super happy. We don't have, we don't have anything to complain about. I mean, we, you know, uh, it's been a dog fight. I mean, to get to where we are, um, it's not easy. Um, so, you know, you carry around or I do, um, rightly or wrongly, I, 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 you know, you carry around some of these battle scars and some of these, you know, things that may have been a disappointment, um, you know, where you came close to getting something and it didn't happen or whatever. Um, but, with all the work that we've got going on now, um, 
you know, truly we, we have no, no reason to complain and have a, we're ex- extremely excited about what we've got going and with, with the things that are percolating in the, in the pipeline. I mean, we're, we're on the verge of being booked out for a couple of years, which is awesome. Is- mm, so we're, so we're going to have to pause our uh, construction is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only, it's keep, only, it's only, I the- mean, just, just, you know, <laughs> it's only, it's only in the ideal phase right now. So, so we're in, we're in a good spot for two to three years. Sounds really good, but I mean, I'm segueing in. I can't, I can't, Missed the opportunity to ask, and I know um, I know Zach Blair is a huge fan of Sweetens, um, and and you guys have uh, uh, at one point in time. I'm like, shit, I'm going to see a Keen Collins build at the Buck Club, and now, as I understand, we're in South Carolina, and we're uh, we, he's uh, he's he's doing it on his own, I guess, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, he the, the original concept was a, a project out in uh, Utah yeah. that was, uh, you know, sort of more of a, a co-design and, um, and as, as Zach, you know, got, you know, farther into it with the, um, you know, the project in South Carolina, um, you know, he really did do the design work to which um, I think he deserves a lot of credit. And, um, sure. and I, you know, I drew the plan for him and, um, you know, there was, there was some collaboration going on, but, um, ultimately it was, was decided that, um, you know, I, and I, I think it's going to be good for both parties that we, you know, decided to, um, kind of go, go a different direction and, um, yeah. you know, uh, he's got a great site down there and, um, by all accounts, it deserves to be a great golf course. So yeah, and and I'm looking forward to playing it. But it, and again, I you know it's uh, I think I'd mentioned to you before we kicked off. I'm I'm like going well, wait a minute. That's like you know because uh, I'm a member of his uh, of, of his of the club, you know, and you see the sure. drawings and stuff that come out, and it's like going well, shit. I don't know what Rob's going to do. He's already got the thing <laughs> mad. Like, everything. It's like, hey, Rob, what do you think? It's like looks good. It's like perfect. <laughs> here, yeah. here you go. But, or, well, I'm sure that there was you know some some probably uh, some constructive uh, discussions. In, in those things. But, uh, but yeah, and, and again, you know, it's, I, I mean, I guess that's the thing, right? If you're building a golf course and you're partnering with people and the golf courses or the golf industry is somewhat incestual in the sense that uh, be careful what you say to one guy because, or, or person, because uh, sooner or later you'll circle back and they'll be sitting across the zoom from you in this case. Right. So yep. it, it, it's small enough and I, I'm sure there's plenty of, uh, plenty of things that go on that, that, that it's like, hey, I wish that maybe wouldn't happen, but it sounds like this one was just uh, right, right place, right time. And hey, we 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 can we can go and do our own things, and it's better for everybody. So yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, the reality too is is that I think um, you know, three or four years ago, you know, King Collins was at a place where you know doing something that was you know with somebody else. I mean, it, it made a lot of sense, but you know, as, as things have, have gone on, I mean, we've kind of moved past that too, you know, and, yeah, sure. and, and Zach, you know, he's got a great vision for it and, um, it, it just, you know, well, it, like, like it, I heard, I, I heard, uh, you're, you're expanding and, uh, you know, I mean, we're, you know, getting booked up. So, which is, you know, that, that's great news, man. I mean, just to think about the story and, and, you know, where you guys were, what you were trying to do and you actually did it. I mean, that just, uh, you know, speaks accolades to, uh, to, to what you guys are, have accomplished and will continue to accomplish. And I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, of course, I'm looking forward to getting back to Sweetens <laughs> and, uh, you know, more importantly, I uh, can't wait to, uh, can't wait to go, go get on a different course. So, um, in uh, in Nebraska with Lamb Man, it should, it should be a great time. Yeah, it's 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 going to be something else. You have to come out and, and check it out this summer or, or this this fall. So love to have you come see it. Yeah, awesome. So what uh, what what did we hit on? I mean, there's the, I mean, I could keep you on here for hours. I'm sure you're you got you got plenty <laughs> of stuff to do, man. But um, what uh, what what stories? You got any good? Uh, oh, I know what I want to ask. Yeah, I don't think I went down this one. So so what's the? And I, I did mention kind of the tour thing, you know, at Landman, and you know that's obviously down the road kind of thing. But uh, let me think of who's there. So Kisner played. 
who you got Peyton that play that's playing in all these uh, the little exhibition matches. Yeah, you've got uh, I didn't, yet Rod. I, I could go down the road. I'm trying to think of the other tour guys that have played that it's been kind of publicly announced at um, at Sweetens. What kind of feedback do you get from tour folks that make it through and, and play the course? Well, I think they they really enjoy it. I mean, uh, Keith Mitchell is is also one of our founders. Um, I, I played at the – we have an annual founders event um, in October, and I, I got to play with him, and that was, was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, he's just on a different level. You know, we on the first hole, he hit driver five iron to about three feet and made an eagle and was – um, I think he was five under through four. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't move too fast. And you hit. <laughs> yeah, I did not hit a. I did not hit a five iron to two feet or three feet. But uh, um, you know, he. Um, I when, I do think that um, you know Sweetens is too short for them, um, but it does it does make them think around the greens. I mean, they've got yeah. a. It, it is effective. It is an effective challenge for them from 50 yards and in. Um, you know, Keith <laughs> Keith had a hell of a round going and then got chewed up on number seven, which, of course, I was just laughing the whole time. Because, <laughs> because like, ah, yes, you know, got him back a little bit. but uh, And he was just, like, basically giving me the bird for <laughs> green, which was great. But, um, you know, that's kind of what – it was interesting to see a, a player, you know, obviously one of the best players in the world. Sure. Um, you know, just kind of cruise through five or six holes. And I think everyone who's ever played Sweetens has had one of those holes where it just, it's like you can't get off of it. You know, it, it just, you keep, the ball keeps rolling back to your feet or whatever. Right. Um, and, um, you know, it is really, it just kind of was a reminder of how exacting that course can be from say 50 yards and in. And and if you just make a little mistake or if you try to get too aggressive, it can get you in. Well, so, so for a double digit amateur, that's where, where I'm just trying to hit the green. Yep. Uh, you know, they're trying to, I want to hit it as close to the hole or in the hole as possible. I'm like, I just need to hit the green. So it may not be quite as punishing to me just trying to hit the green as it is yep. for somebody going, especially on some of those, you know, if you're putting it kind of, you know, just at the slope or at the base or right on the, right on the lip, uh, I'm thinking like number eight is, uh, that one's kind of, you know, got that huge lip coming into that yep. thing. So, <laughs> well, I mean, and I remember when we were building it and thinking, God, there's going to be some of the craziest you know, 40, 50 yard pitch shots out here where, you know, most golf courses, if you're at that range, you're thinking knock it to two or three feet, but there's actually places at Sweden's where you want to play, you know, away from the hole from that yardage. And that just kind of is a little bit of a mind fuck, honestly. I mean, because you're like, absolutely because you're like normal, normally you wouldn't be doing that. And, and that just, it starts to chew away at you a little bit. And, um, you know, it, I've had good rounds going out there where you just get obliterated on a hole and, you know, it kind of drives you nuts and you have to recover. But uh, that's, you know, that's kind of what it's all about. But, um, I mean, you know, if you were to actually have a real tournament out there, I mean, a guy like Keith would just more yeah. or less score wise demolish it. But yeah, dust uh, your ass, but, right? But I mean, <laughs> still, but it's still, you know, it still can give him a, a challenge at times, you know, yeah, particularly, sure. particularly or, or in and around the green. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would think it's got to be fun for those guys to do something that they don't have to, you know, because again, I mean, you you can bust fairways and then you can start to be strategic. And you know, I mean, in the back of them, I mean, they're, they're probably thinking like, shit, why, how do I get to play more of these things for? Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's awesome. I love having, having guys like that come out. So yeah, it's been really good. Uh, what events are coming up, man? Any, uh, are you, are you aware of any, or I need to get well, mad up for that? We've got a, um, we've got a big meeting on the 19th and 20th to lay out the, the whole year. And, and there's some, there's some things being discussed, um, which I think are, are really exciting. And, you know, one of our goals at, at Sweetens every year is to kind of look, look and see what we did and what do we do well, what do we not do well? And, you know, just kind of keep trying to take it to a new level. And, um, 
you know, we've got some ideas of things we can do um, event wise and just in day to day wise too. Um, you know, things that I'd like to implement this year to just, you know, continue to make the experience better. And, but um, nothing, nothing big on the horizon, but, but we are going to have a definitely kind of a big sweetens, you know, a couple day event um, some point in the summer. Um, and, you know, we'll have more events, you know, attached to food kind of like we did before with uh, Hattie B's and, you know, yep. Waffle House kind of mm-hmm. stuff, but we'll probably branch out uh, to a few other um, places as well. And, and, you know, just try to make it as, as fun as we can. So how long, uh, what, what's the course been open now? What that, since you guys have taken over officially we opened in October of 14. So, um, so we're about seven, six, six, seven years. Yeah. Are you, are you tired of talking about it yet? No, never. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I can't man. It's, I, I, it's hard awesome. to believe it was, it was it going on six and a half years ago. Um, you know, we barely made it through the winter of 14 and 15. It was about this time in 2015, which is six years ago that we, um, I was actually the only person maintaining the golf course at that time. And, um, in, in Patrick was, was in the shed yeah. and we, we got a, got an investment, um, over the winter that allowed us to reopen in the spring. There was a big question about whether or not we were going to open in the, in the spring of 15 or not. So, um, you know, all that effort was almost for naught. Um, but, but we, we got through and, um, you know, that was, it's hard, it's just hard to believe that we're, we're six years into it now, but um, it just keeps getting better. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. That's, uh, that, I mean, like, I don't, I haven't gotten tired. I've, you've played it a lot more than I have, but, uh, but again, it's uh, the, if, if it were about an hour closer, I'd, I'd probably be like, uh, Hey, don't show your ass back up there anymore. This is way too convenient <laughs> for you. Kind of <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know if we, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of elude and uh, is Airbnb available yet? Or is that happening or not happening? Or is that yeah, not? Uh, I believe uh, there are some more Airbnbs um, okay. coming up this year um, along Sweetens Cove road. Um, so that's, that's exciting. Um, and then, you know, one thing that we have talked about just kind of loosely, no, there's no concrete plans at all, but, um, one thing that I think the business needs to do long-term is, is provide some, some lodging at some point. We need to figure out how that works and, and yeah. how where the money comes from and so forth. Um, and, and what that looks like, but I'd like to have have overnight lodging on site as well. Um, but, but we've loved having the, the no laying up guys in the neighborhood and sure. and then the, the other ones that are popping up are, are great too. And, um, I think, I mean, I, I can really envision, me. I can really envision like a, a, a row of air streams. <laughs> That's actually been discussed. Just say, I mean, you can bunk bed those things. And uh, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that, that's, that's my dream home, by the way. Cal is, and I uh, are both huge Airstream people. Yes, we well, are. It's funny yeah. y'all mentioned that. Well, that's actually been discussed before. So that is, that option is on the table. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be fun, man. I mean, it's because, I mean, people camp there. I mean, there's all yeah. kinds of crazy yeah. shit going. I mean, like I'm telling if people haven't, I don't know, maybe most of the people listening to our show have been there, but if you haven't, I mean, it is, it, it's a must, man. I mean, it is, it, it, this may be, now I've been on trips with like my guys that I've known for years and all that stuff, but I'm saying just getting to a golf course and playing and just seeing the environment and, and, and the, everything that goes on at Sweetens. I mean, it is, uh, and, and I was tongue in cheek when I said, are you tired of talking about it yet? Because I don't know how you could actually get tired of talking about it from a sense of just the, the, the excitement. I mean, all the shit that you had to go through to get to the point that it's like, well, I can actually talk about it now. And it doesn't, yeah, I'm not like, yeah. uh, where, where's the ledge? Yeah. Where's the, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's totally true. I mean, it, um, it is, it's the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, I, I remember when it was, when we were in the New York times, I, I said to my brother, well, I mean, God, it's what a great run. I mean, well, it's like, hey, at least the New York Times wrote my obituary. All right. the publicity it'll, it'll get. I mean, and, and then here we are almost three and a half years later, and it just, it keeps on going. It, the place is magic. It, it, it really is. And, and the people around it are, are 
you know, make it that way too. I mean, and you know, all the, all the people who come and create all this enthusiasm around it, it's just, uh, it just makes you feel great. It's fun to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that, that's a sure thing. All right. So we're rolling out a few, I don't know, what else do we, uh, what do you want to leave? We got some questions for you. These are going to be the real okay. challenging ones. Yeah, you got it. Uh, what, um, uh, so that, hold on, where can they find, uh, Rob Collins at before we roll through these? Uh, right now I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And online, what's your web, web address, Web? Rob? Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> uh, KingCollinsGolf.com. And then uh, my Twitter is at KingCollinsGolf and Instagram's KingCollinsGolf. Cool. All and right. I, and two, of course, we're about to yep. – um, about to start a new nine hole project in memphis tennessee the redo of overton park cool which i'm actually starting that next week so really which which is awesome well fingers crossed for weather uh i think they just got snow there this week so (laughs) did they really that's well i if it wasn't snow it was like uh you know just missed a degree or two and but yeah good luck with uh hope hope that goes well oh well all right you you brought it that that's a that's going to be a cool project um it's a uh, something we've been looking at for a couple of years and it's a you know nine hole municipal project i'd say the most analogous example to it is the is the winter park project um that, that keith and I did, that, did down there in orlando oh, which yeah. is you know really successful yeah. um so it's a about a 2500 yard course but it sits in the you know right in the heart of memphis um winds through the old growth forest and um you know we're we're really pumped about that as well that's a that's gonna be a be a lot of fun and um we've got our got our crew coming in and they'll be there this weekend and we'll we'll kick things off a week from today so yeah lay off the hard stuff you may have to pee later (laughs) <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, so, so that's pretty cool. Though. I mean, so again, I mean, I know you're, you're kind of branching and doing these different things, but I mean, I feel like, and, and I'm not talking about the business, I'm talking about just Rob as the person right now, but it sounds like you like these intricate, uh, these nine hole cuts that you get to go in and be creative and turn something that somebody may like, I, I, like you, do you feel like you've got it mastered and like, of course I can do 18, I can do 36, I can do whatever you want to do, but like these nine hole, like interesting creative layouts, it sounds like you really like to do that. Oh, I do. do. Well, we definitely do. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's fun and it, it's, it's fun to um, put golf that really makes you think in forces you to do a lot of different things that's on a small footprint, you know, normally with a, with a small footprint, you wouldn't expect to have the kind of shots and things that you have. Um, but you know, um, we think that we can do something at Overton park too, that, you know, be, be a lot of fun and, you know, no, no comment required from you, but, um, so I don't know. So in Atlanta, we've got a course, it's a, a city owned course and it's called uh, Bobby Jones golf. Oh, Uh, and it's, it's just over the way. Yep. I used to play it it all the time. I I lived in Atlanta from the, uh, and from 98 to 02 and me and my buddy used to. All right. So did you have, how how many balls, how many balls have you been hit with? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure they could close with a ball, but we, I've I've played some three hour nine hole rounds there in in the late (laughs) nineties. Yeah. So, you know, they turned this into a nine hole golf course and uh, you know, I, I, um, I'm probably, so I'm in Grant park. So give or take, I don't talk about timing wise, even though with COVID like traffic is a breeze, it's like the best thing that's ever happened from COVID is traffic, but I'm maybe three miles or so from Bobby Jones. And I'm like, man, this, that's going to be great. They've redone it. It's not going to be a shit show over there anymore. And I, I'm not dogging out the, the everything because it gets a lot of play and it gets, but just the way, and, and, and it may be the way the terrain that they had to deal with. It, it's just, it, I, I'm like on, I, I understand why they changed it because they changed it so they could have a better practice practice facility they've got a good youth um organization over there where they're kind of giving back to the community and etc but um man those guys if you're listening hey bobby jones golf club if you're listening uh this guy could really 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 help you (laughs) in the next overhaul like those that would be i mean i'm even thinking from just uh i know it we're not we all are humanitarians 
But uh, it, it, I'd be interesting to hear your take on, and not to tell anybody what they did or didn't do wrong, but I'd be interested to see how you would do different. It could have been a monetary thing because it's city owned and they just didn't have resources to be able to do it. But I feel like they had a really great piece of property. They, I mean, they've got water running through it. It's got elevation. And I just, I, when I go out and play it and they, you know, and they had to spend some money and I, I just, I, I think they missed a lot of opportunity. I'm not an architect by any means and not even close. I just think that there was, I, I think that they really could have leveraged maybe some different individuals to do something. Hmm. I, you know, I can't really comment on it. I, the, my memory of it is, was the pre, pre-construction version. Yeah. The last time I played, it was probably 2002. Um, I was really excited to see that they were, were taking that project on. And it, and it seems like they had a very creative approach to it. I think it's a, isn't it reversible? Is that right? So it is. Yeah. Which, which makes it even more dangerous now because now you're like hitting balls like at each other. So even <laughs> so, so before, before when the fairways were kind of close and you could have sprayed one off left or right and you could have got now it's reversible in the sense and they're getting so much play that you're like, like I'm teeing off this way and you're teeing off this way. And you hope that the people are very responsible and know what they're doing and, and they do it differently in the way that they switch it up. But I, I, I don't know. I just found a lot of challenges with it. And when I looked at it, when I looked at it as a, uh, as, as a, um, uh, 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 um, an upgrade, well, not an upgrade, I'm sorry, but a, uh, uh, a remodel yeah. to the golf course, uh, I'm like going, I don't know what you, you I mean, why did you, I would have, again, it's, I'm not an architect, so I, I, I shouldn't go too far down the hole, but it'd be <laughs> interesting for you to look at that. And I'd like to chat with you if we ever get a chance to play golf about what you think yeah. about they did. And personally, we don't, it, it, we're not, I'm not bad mouthing the golf course, man. I, I, I love, you know, great track. Uh, you know, it's still a golf course and it's an opportunity to play golf in the city of Atlanta, like in the city. So that's like, that's an, kind of an unknown that you would be able to, to go and, and have that green space to be able to do that. But, uh, but yeah, I, I was like going, some of the holes, I just scratched my head and I'm going like, I don't, I don't really know why you did that kind of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. It's interesting. I, I, I haven't, I, I've just seen some pictures of it, so I don't, I don't, yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, not a, not ending on a bad note. All right, so hold on. Here we go. What's your favorite course to play? That's not one of your designs. Hmm. Uh, I love Pinehurst number two. Um, I, I'm just a you know a huge fan of that place. Um, you know, it was a huge influence on on Sweet and Scove, and that's that's uh, definitely one of my favorites I, I could go play there every day for sure <laughs> couldn't we all yeah yeah that's <laughs> and, good, and, and it could it could make us better golfers by the way <laughs> uh if that, that was a short our, game if that was our home course yeah what's uh what's your favorite club in the bag mm, probably driver um if i'm hitting my driver well it seems like a lot of the other stuff falls into place, but when it goes sideways, everything else so if tends this to crumble is, with it. But um, when it is going well, it's it's a lot of fun. To, it, it makes golf fun. So I just try to not remember the times when I'm hitting <laughs> duck hook after duck hook. Be the goldfish, right? There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so if you and if there are no sponsorship issues, what uh, what what driver are you gaming? Uh, I've played Taylor made my entire life. Um, up until last year, I went and got a fitting and, and, and playing, uh, uh, Callaway. Um, I can't remember the name of it. It's Maverick. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the uh, last year's version. I think it's what, yeah. Maverick yeah. The is. orange and black kind of looking thing. No, it's green and green and black. Oh, no, you're uh, playing the Epic, the Epic, the Epic. That's right. Epic. epic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great really club. Fun. I really like it. Yeah. Uh, I what's that, uh, in, that in three wood. Okay, so both epic and th- all right. So what? Uh, well, you not Patrick hadn't got you playing those nationals yet. Well, he doesn't make drivers. I've got a set of uh, national custom irons. Oh, is that what you play, you play those? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, those things are awesome. I love them. Uh, let's see. So uh, wh- okay, so if you're playing a game, so when you and Keith were playing, uh, what what game are you got? What's your favorite game to play on the course? Uh, my favorite game is is. Uh, is a hammer game um but we were playing just like a 
I think it was like a um, best ball thing that was this part of the tournament or whatever. So it was like a shamble or best ball or something like that. So but, what's uh, the what's the hammer though? What's the what's this hammer game? Well, like you know, play you know, you know, you go out and you know, it's like a best ball hammer game where you know th- there's a certain amount that the, that you're betting per hole, and then the hammer has a value, and then the hammer oh, and the free hammer, and then it just. It gets exponentially. I, I got you. Interesting. I've I have a um, couple of friends I've, I've played that with, and and that was that was a lot of fun. So that's cool. That's cool. Uh, let's see what else do we want to go on this list. Some of these, some of these, you don't want me to ask you. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe maybe you do actually want no, me to just ask, ask you. I don't. I don't know. Maybe you do. I don't. I don't. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't want to ask you this one. Well, maybe. <laughs> well, it's. I mean, sometimes I make random notes, and I was just thinking today, what do I want to ask Rob? And I'm like, well, what what course don't you want to play again? And you don't have to answer that because I don't know. Maybe it. I mean, it's like, well, we. You know, but I mean, is there a course that you play? I mean, because again, I mean, there are courses out there that it's like it could be a fantastic golf course. It's just it was so damn hard that I just. It's like I just ate my lunch, and it's like I just don't want. It's not. It's not to do with the with how the course is maintained. It doesn't have to do with the design. It just has to do with that course is not fun for me because I can't play it. You know, one course that kind of gets me like that. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful golf course. It's a, it's a famous golf course, but um, spyglass out at at Pebble beach. I mean, I just feel like it's, um, it's just a, it's kind of sort of, it just bangs you over the head a little too much, you know, yeah. just it's, it becomes monotonous in, in the, the questions it asks, you know, I just, yeah. wanted, what, I didn't find it. It's a incredible piece of land, but I didn't find it particularly intriguing. H- hard to enjoy. Yeah. Hard to, <laughs> hard to, I mean, it's, you know, you're playing golf in California on an amazing piece of land. So it's not like you can't, really no, no, complain, I'm saying hard to, it, hard to enjoy your round of like, golf. You just feel like it could be so much better. I mean, you know, strategically and, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, what about it? So, so who's, um, it doesn't have to be the last folks or it, it, it time frame doesn't matter. I mean, we talked about, you worked for players, uh, architect, uh, architect firm and, uh, and I'm sure, and, you know, Peyton's, uh, Peyton's been to the, to the course, Drew Holcomb, uh, Kisner, uh, Keith Mitchell, all these folks. And I'm sure you've had rounds of golf and interaction with some of these people. You've got, if you've got a good story that you'd like to, that you want to kind of drop with one of these individuals and you're like, shit, you ain't going to believe this. <laughs> well, um, it was I, the one, like the one that pops to mind was um, Kevin Kisner when he and Drew Holcomb were playing in that, that um, event to benefit um, businesses that had, yep. I think, you know, for, for COVID this was back in the, in the spring. And I think Kisner started out Eagle birdie. Did he Eagle three? He may have been, he may have been five under through three. Wow. He was like well on his way to <laughs> setting the course record. And um, just, the sheer amount of trash talking that was coming out of that guy's mouth. <laughs> um, it, it's, is a, I am consider myself a, a connoisseur of the art and um, he was really, he's really good at it. And it was fun to see somebody who just has, has perfected the art of trash talking. So like, between, like he so, has. So, so between that, tobacco, that was great. So between tobacco spit and trash talk, he couldn't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, he was, he was, it's hilarious, man. Awesome. He's, he's a hoot. That's, that's uh that, that's yeah good. that's awesome all right i'm i'm late one i got one last one dan may have some more one last one so uh, if you're, best if, iced if tea if on the road if, you, if you're not drinking sweetens cove if you're not drinking sweetens cove what do you or or sweetens tea what are you pouring <laughs> um i like uh as far as like uh you know alcoholic drink or a beer goes i I always like a, um, like a lager or pilsner. I'll, like if I go out to a bar or a restaurant, I'll ask them like if they, you know, like a local beer or something like that. Um, but, um, you know, I like um, obviously definitely preferential to Sweden's Cove whiskey. But, um, you know, there's a few other uh, whiskeys like gin and tonics too. Um, Ooh, you passed the test, my friend. <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> keep, those, keep those mosquitoes away. That's right. <laughs> 
Uh, Rob, so best iced tea on the road. Mm. Let's see. Zaxby's has got really good iced tea. All right. Um, you know, they got the little chewy nugget ice. Mm-hmm. Um, so oh, that, pellet, that, pellet ice. The pellet <laughs> ice. I mean, one thing that people don't realize about iced tea, that the, the tea itself is important, but the ice ratio is incredibly important. <laughs> and then if you um, take that to another level with the type of ice like Zaxby's does, I mean, that really is a, you can always count on a good glass of iced tea there. Nice. So you're going sweet tea? Is it half and half or what do you know? No, doing? I, well, I used to go sweet tea. Um, but then I realized that I'd probably <clears throat> enter a phase of kidney failure in my life. So I've cut to ha- half and half. And then about 10 years ago, I, I, I went to just, I do unsweet now. Nice. Nice. So, yeah. But, um, I wish I would, I would prefer sweet tea. It tastes better. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh i know but they're like just use the fake sugar and it's like jesus christ i'll just take it unsweet just don't <laughs> don't put anything in it like, no, you've just, just ruined just put, give me a lemon yeah exactly you've just, you've just ruined it uh man yeah. hey you you can find rob thanks so much uh we've kept you over uh your allotted commitment time so uh no, you thank guys you. are great i appreciate you having me on no, no, thanks. Thanks for coming on for sure. Um, where can you find it? You can find it at Sweetens Cove. I wouldn't go to Landman yet. I mean, it may be creepy if well, you they, show up out there. A, uh, they've got a, a website up right now, actually. I believe it's uh, Landman GC, L A N D M A N D GC, I think. You could double check that. But go- um, Google Landman a few times and you'll yeah, find it. It's a golf course. They, they ju- just launched their website. And then, uh, and then of course, we, you know, we're kingcollinsgolf.com and, and whatnot. So. Yeah, awesome. You can come see us at Sweetens. Absolutely. Well, wait a minute. Did you mean that directly towards us? Or were you talking <laughs> to the listeners? You're talking to the listeners? Every, everyone. Uh, hey, yeah. Andrew. Hey, and by the way, if you're if you're listening, uh, let us know if you're going to make it to Sweetens. Uh, we'll uh, we'll hit Madamski up and uh, we'll see if we can uh, get out on the course, man. Why Absolutely. not? Absolutely. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Rob. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Thanks so hey, much, man. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you yeah, so much. Great chat hey. with you, buddy. Thanks, Thanks, guys.